again, people sometimes people wonder why we have this show, and it's so that we can encourage people to work together to bring the solutions about. We have advanced technologies. They need to get into mass production. We have permission from the highest levels of government to mass produce, but we need we need people to work together. We only need 300 regular faithful gifters every month, and it doesn't matter what it is. If you, know, you pray about it, we ask everybody to pray about it. If it's $50, the Lord's telling you, then send $50 faithfully each month. If it's $500, send $500 faithfully each month. If it's $5,000, send $5,000. Whatever the Lord's telling you, but it, for most people, most people don't earn that much. So a rule of thumb is 10% should go to the Lord. And, and so whatever you believe is the Lord's work, you should pray about it and God will bear witness in your heart. And that's a good rule of thumb to help humanity and help the planet and love your neighbor and love the planet and love your neighbor as yourself is to, is to make sure 10% goes back to the Lord. And there's many scriptures that encourage that too. And some people call it tithing and gifting and so on. Uh, and we will save that for another lesson. But for now, just everybody pray about it and give as the Lord leads your heart. And God is good, and he can make these things happen. We offer various gifts on the gifts page. Yeah, people that do donate can request gifts, whatever you'd like. And we always encourage people to get consultations. That's part of the gifts. And if you need healing, uh, we try to make that as, as, as reasonable as possible or even free in many cases, healing consultation and so on, and uh, just to help people. And, uh, you know, we do minister free all over the world, too, on that particular subject. So God is good. If you have a church that you'd like, uh, if, you'd li if you'd like us to speak in your church, you know, have the pastor give us a call. Uh, send us an email first and let us know that he's the pastor and he'd like us to to uh, to teach or, or share in his church, and we will do that as long as there's you know a decent number of people that are going to be there. If it's you know, I'm not going to travel all the way around the world for five people, but uh, unless God tells me to, if, <laughs> I have done that before. I, uh, he told one brother, this wasn't me, but he told one brother to travel literally from New Zealand, and this is back when he took six months to travel from New Zealand to uh, uh, Washington. Uh, this one brother was told to do that to help two people, and he did, and it changed their life. Uh, both of them are now, and they have been for many years, mighty missionaries because of that visit. So sometimes God will tell me to go visit two people or five people or even one person, and sometimes it's a great expense. But if, if he wants me to do it, I'll do it because he's my buddy. He's my friend. I, I can count on him when I need him, and so he can count on me when he needs me. And uh, God is good. The angels can't preach. Only men can preach. God has to preach or teach the Word of God. If you look in the Bible, angels never preach or teach the Word of God. They only help connect people. They help people get together. They'll go show up at one person. They'll say, you go talk to him. Or they'll go show up at the other person. You go send for him. The angels help can people connect. And they help move people's hearts to what they know they're supposed to do, or what they're supposed to do certain things. But they don't preach the Word of God. Uh, and so some people think, well, God can do all this without me. No, God needs you. God needs each of us. Each of us are born with a spark of God in us, and God wants to see us get that out into the world and bless the world with it. Amen. So don't let your music die in your heart. <laughs> let that music grow. Now is the time to release it. Uh, now is the time to get into the Word of God and get into the things of God and just let God start flowing out of you in blessing and loving and helping humanity. And let's make this, if we just work together, it's easy. 300 people is all it takes working together who would totally can change the world. And uh, we've got 3,000 on our mailing list now. Actually, I think it's more like 6,000. But uh, um, anyway, it's, it's easy. Just so everybody pray about it and do as God leads your heart. We can make this world a great place. We've got Brother Martin as our guest. Are you there, Brother Martin? Uh, I think I am here. Let me. All get, right, uh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> let me get let me get rolling here. Okay. Well, thank you for coming on, brother. Uh, it's always a pleasure to have you. You got a heart of gold, and and I tell you, it makes this job my job a lot easier when I have people like you to work with. So I really. <laughs> well, I think the uh, the angels are over there uh, tapping me on the shoulder, saying, "You need to go help him. You need to go help him." So, uh, uh, yeah. What's well, kind of funny about that? You bringing that up there. Uh, I I, uh, I read a book not too long ago. A friend of mine recommended, and it's called hiring hiring your angels, and uh, the it's just it's just a small little little book. But it uh, a lady wrote it, and she says don't be you know don't be bashful, don't be a sh uh, don't be shy. Get your angels together and have more. In fact, get a whole group of angels if you got a problem, and then let them get to work on it and and, uh, and get things rolling. And it is a it's an amazing 
it's an amazing little book because I, I use that uh, quite often. I uh, Amen. I put my angels on it. Amen. So. Amen. Amen. Well, we've prayed already and sent angels to people to help them know that they're supposed to do the right thing. And they get such a burning inside of them as, you know, like a motivation, a strong motivation. It's not burning like physical heat, but it's just a strong motivation coming around their heart that they almost go crazy sometimes. Uh, a lot of times they can't bring themselves to do the right thing, but uh, at least they know that they're supposed to, you know? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> at least there's no doubt in, in all the history of their life that they never had an encounter quite like that. Uh, I know one brother, I'll share another experience, uh, one brother who uh, uh, he witnessed to a guy that was lost and he told him one scripture and, and the guy kind of went home, but he prayed afterward to send the angels and send the Holy Spirit and he said, uh, let that scripture not leave his mind. And and when he wakes up in the middle of the night, he'll see that. I feel like that scripture is right in the room with him, standing at the end of the bed. And they wound up getting the guy to surrender to God. I, he, I don't know what he was doing or what you know what, why he wasn't surrendered or what, I don't know. I don't remember the whole story. But it wound up later. The guy came to God and he said, the reason is that one scripture he quoted me. He said it just kept bugging me. He said I'd wake up in the middle of the night. I feel like I'm standing at the end of my bed. <laughs> uh, just like he prayed. And, uh, you know, that that can, you know, the power of God is real, and it can move people. It, it, you know, some people fight it. You know, if people just fight it, of course, you know, they may not ever get moved, you know, but the, but it's still, it's it's inside of them, and it's burning to get out. The music of God is burning to get out of everybody, really. So what God called people to do is, is, is burning to get out of everybody. It's burning to, to be manifested into this world. I, I, hear, I, I completely... I'm on page with you on this one because it's uh, it's quite something. And and you know and and if you start following uh, if you f if you follow that guidance, uh, things are pretty interesting and pretty exciting and uh, very fulfilling. I mean, it really um, it's, it's really a lot of it's uh, I don't know how to explain it. It's just uh, of, very very yeah. fulfilling. <laughs> it's adventures in the God kind, right? Adventures Absolutely, of the God kind. absolutely. Amen. Those are the best yeah. kind of adventures. I often run into people, nowadays there's more people depressed than ever, and I often run into these people, and I always tell them, I said, hey, you know, let the things of God flow from your spirit, whatever God's calling you, and it'll make you happy, and and most of the time they're so shut up inside that they don't even want to talk about what's really in their spirit, what they, right. <laughs> you know, if I ask them, a lot of times they don't want to tell me, you know, but, uh, you know, I guess if I, if I spend more time with them, uh, you know, several visits, and usually then they open up and tell you what's in their spirit, and usually it's something really wonderful, maybe they're called to sing, or they're called to, uh, right. they're called to be an archaeologist, or they're called to be, uh, uh, a minister or teacher or you know whatever they're called to do uh, they're you know if they start letting it out and in, in you know whatever way they God will open the doors you know God will make a way and uh, then they get happy it changes their life uh, whatever they're called to do from the Lord yeah it's it is quite remarkable well I, th I think um, I, I did have a, a couple of a notes to, tonight maybe we'd uh, we talk about uh, one of them is the uh, down in you, you talked about New Zealand again um, one of them is the earthquakes have been having down there, and uh, there's there's quite a bit of devastation happening uh, with the uh, these earthquakes, and I've never seen anything like it in a uh, in a uh, civilized uh, you know regular conventional towns. I think Christchurch was uh, hit pretty hard, and I saw some pictures uh, my wife was showing me, and it's like wow. I mean that's uh, that that could be a town here in the United States that's. Uh, been hit very very hard i mean it's wow. um, yeah i haven't seen i haven't seen those pictures but uh yeah that's awesome that's really awesome uh is it is it uh like buildings collapsed and so on pre oh, yeah buildings colla you know uh you know roads all messed up where they can't get anything in and out um uh muds mud and flooding and slides like that uh you know just old churches and stuff with uh with walls falling in or off and uh you know a lot of uh structure that's uh damaged pretty heavily and uh well, I, yeah i said earlier i enjoy earthquakes i don't enjoy seeing people suffer uh, and i don't enjoy the property damage and all that but i, I do enjoy an earthquake but you know i don't enjoy the you know just i just want to clarify <laughs> I don't think I'm a nut or something, you know. Yeah, well, yeah. hope your angels <laughs> haven't been up to something here. 
<laughs> but, uh, but yeah, that's yeah. We'll pray for those people, and uh, you know, God can help even such even in those kind of situations. Yeah, earthquakes are quite quite. Uh, they're actually on the rise, as you probably know. And yeah. more, Jesus said that was one of the signs of the end: is there'd be more and more earthquakes, earthquakes one place after another. Well, and we just had one in Haiti about a year ago, right? And something like that. And yep. now it's a bit on Christchurch. And, uh, you know, that that big tidal wave that hit in 2000, I don't know, 2002 or whatever, 2004 or whatever, that big tidal wave was caused by an earthquake uh, in the right. ocean. And, you know, it's, that's, yeah, so it's it's definitely uh, definitely part of the signs of the times. Yeah, sure. a- absolutely. And uh, I think it, it kind of hits close to home when you see um... – <laughs> These uh, more upwardly mobile people, you know, driving in their Volvos and their Mercedes and and things like that, and it's like, wow, they're even there. It, it's not just poor people that earthquakes hit. It's uh... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's the wealthy people. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, the poor and the rich. Yeah, yeah. I'm not I'm not trying to make light of it. I mean, uh, but it's uh, it, it is amazing times we're living in, and uh, there's a lot of opportunity to be woken up and. Um, you know, change change your outlook on things. So, and the, I I look at this as sort of a a blessing in disguise in in many ways. It is going to cause people to wake up and work together and work toward things that are uh, that are worthwhile. Um, and that's I like I like to see that. So yeah, uh, man, there's a there's a silver cloud. Uh, there's a lining a silver lining ever cloud. I'll put it that way. And uh, yeah, so the good part is people can start working together and 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 come up with better solutions and so on. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm with you 100% on that. Uh, yeah, did you want to say, do you have any other news about the earthquake or should well, we go on? Honestly, to yeah, that, that's it. And, you know, hopefully um, people will watch this and see, because uh, I, I, know, I know that they'll pull together and they'll, uh, they'll come out of this. And, uh, but it's, you know, I, I hope people see that all around the world and it doesn't have to be an earthquake. It can be, you know, one thing I'd like to see that I I don't really see too much yet, and that's um, uh, the devastation down here in the Gulf of Mexico with the uh, um, the oil spill, if you want to call it a spill. I, it's devastation down there, and uh, you know the the locals are really getting hit hard. They they're really getting sick from all the toxic uh, spraying that they did and the toxicity of the oil and compounds that were released, and uh, it's a it's a real mess still down there. But there doesn't seem to be a, you know, you don't see the pictures on the news, uh, so there's not this rallying coming together. It, it's only, you know, it's just their problem, and, you know, they have to breathe the air. And if they're getting sick, well, maybe they can go to the doctor, and they're going to get checks from uh, BP anyway. So um, uh, ho- hopefully yeah. we'll rally around that one of these days. Yeah, people people could rally around that in some way or another. I know there have been uh, groups uh, even – with the ministry that went down to help uh, alleviate the poisons and the toxins, I don't know how much success they had. They claim they had some pretty good success. Uh, it, you know, of course, the power of God and the power of prayer can do great things too. Uh, and hopefully, that is actually stopped now that the oil spill is stopped, and hopefully, they have enough brains to not start it open again and start it up again. Uh, it's you know, it's it has the potential really to be a major worldwide uh, plague, uh, like the ten plagues of Egypt. I'd, I'd say even worse than that because it's worldwide. It has the potential to to spread those kind of poisons and so on spread worldwide. Right. The poisons were the worst. Poisons were not the oil. The worst poisons were the stuff they sprayed on the oil, in supposedly to help uh, dissipate the oil. But all that it does is kill everything that comes hey, in contact right. with it. You know? That's right. It uh, it's basically killing everything and making everything sick. And uh, yeah, it's a it's a real real mess. So um, um, I wish uh, the good news the good news is that we have solutions for all that. If the right. as the fund comes in, we can do more and more to help. And uh, and God has the solutions too. We have authority over everything on this planet. So people if people will get in agreement that these poisons are being neutralized. And also get an agreement that these people behind it are going to go to prison. That would all be good. Uh, you know, we can agree and we can make it happen. And the unclean spirits behind those people are going to get cast out and locked up in the middle of the desert somewhere. Uh, that would that would be uh, you know until they go to the bottom of the pit. When Jesus comes back. He's going to there's going to be an angel come down and, and catch the devil and I imagine all the unclean spirits as well. Put them all in the bottomless pit. It says for a thousand years. 
to some kind of holding chamber for a thousand years. Well, I yeah. I I think uh, I think we're in those times, so I hope uh, hope some of those things start taking place because uh, yeah, I'm ready for a new world. We're ready for the cavalry. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and, of course, and of course, people don't realize it, but we're the cavalry. You know, we're the good guys, and all we have to do is literally work together, just like the cavalry works together, and we can do great things on this planet. So, right. Uh, you know, Encourage everybody to invest, to learn more and to start working together as the Lord leads your heart. Right. Amen. Well, uh, one other one other uh, topic that I thought we might bring up is um, I kind of got to learn a little bit about um, a structured water uh, over the last uh, few months, and uh, I know I haven't really spoken much about uh, that to you specifically, but um, um, I've learned a lot about water and uh, there was a movie um, quite a, while, a few years ago that came out called What the Bleep Do We Know and part part of the movie was based on um, uh, how water actually can uh, change based on our thoughts and our intention and uh, you know I think it's been documented in many many scientific studies that indeed there is some interaction between the human intention and water uh, and there's a famous um, I think he's a Japanese uh, um, scientist that's photographed uh, freezing water molecules under a, I think it's a dark background scope or something like this and he takes pictures of crystals and he absolutely has some amazing uh, results there where he puts uh, different intentions and uh, or, or prayer or things like that and, and does these tests and absolutely good intentions cause uh, the water crystals to come out really pretty and magnificent in many cases and and bad intention and bad thinking and bad words cause you know real ugly looking crystals to form or not even symmetrical in a lot of cases real ugly stuff so yeah. and if you water the plants with the ugly stuff they don't grow as good as if you water the plants with the good stuff either that that's been proven over and over again which is really shows the power of prayer and the power of people working together and sending good thoughts absolutely focusing on focusing on positive things yeah absolutely and the uh, um, it, it's fascinating because uh, you know the human body is uh, is mostly water to a large degree so what we're thinking is having an effect on ourselves and uh, and things around us. So, um, but but anyway, um, in relate in you know relating to that, uh, I met a fellow not too long ago, uh, probably maybe a year ago, a year ago. He contacted me um, because of wits, and he'd seen uh, your energy work uh, with the machines that uh, you had up on YouTube. And he contacted me. He says, he, you know, I really wants to help. He really wants to help. And by the way. You know, I do a little bit of this uh, kind of technology stuff too, and I've got a water unit. And I, I guess it, he's probably been, I think he'd, he said he'd been working on it for about 15 years. It was really a passion to him. In the last couple of years, he's come out with a, with a unit that he's calling a, a water edge, uh, whole house water unit. I'm not trying to make a commercial here for him or anything like that, but I think people need to know that this kind of stuff is becoming available, and it really is pretty significant technology because this is a. I got a. I got one here. I'll just throw up here. Yeah, well, definitely. If, <laughs> if the guy is, uh, we don't mind uh, encouraging people to look into it. Yeah. Okay. I don't know if you can see this, but it's a. It's a thing that's about. Uh, I guess it's about 24 inches long, and it's got these connectors on each end. Yeah. And um, it's kind of heavy, and there's a certain there's a particular direction that the water flows through it. But he basically can you plumb this into your house water supply, uh, and he also he also puts an additional uh, conventional filter on on just to filter out large sediment and stuff. But this thing this thing really kind of works magic. I was actually pretty amazed by this because uh, he tells me that it's it's working with uh, vortexes in there and it's putting particular patterns in in the water. For, let's see, first it erases. It erases the patterns in it, then it programs patterns in the water, and certain you might say frequencies in the water, and then it goes throughout your whole house. And some of the some of the things that's happened um, from people that have used this thing is quite amazing. It, it cleans it cleans the uh, 
the insides of the pipes, uh, water heaters, um, like the um, the ring that you might find in the uh, bowl of the toilet that the uh, yeah. uh, like mineral deposits and stuff. Yeah. That actually that actually starts going away. It sort of wow. dissolves it. Um, wow. The the uh, you don't get the soap scum built up in your shower. Excellent. Uh, uh, you you can water your plants with this stuff and they grow better. Uh, wow. Let's see. Wow. One of the things I just got mine installed. I was so impressed with uh, what he was telling me about, you know, and he turned out to be a really good friend because it's like he's telling me about this water. And it's like, oh yeah, well, we need to help wits, and you know, and I do this, and so I go, well, bring one down, and like to, I'd like to see it. And so uh, he came through. He was going to visit his daughter that goes to school down here in Texas, and he came came by, and uh, he brought one with him, and uh, he's telling me all, all these things. I go, well, I don't really like to try it out. So we actually got one, and we, I just got it put in. But immediately, this is really weird, pra immediately as when I turned the water back onto the house and uh, uh, Greg was in the kitchen sink, we're flushing the water out through the kitchen sink uh, faucet and everything, and he was washing his hands, you know, he's washing his hands. And he told me, it's like, you know the, how the uh, an air bubble will sort of come through and you know kind of make a splash through the faucet. As soon as that happened, and then the, this new water started coming through, he says, "I can tell a complete difference. In this water is softer. This is like this feels different." Wow. So Excellent. yeah, I mean, so you can actually. And I, I have to tell you, I've been showering in it for the last few days, and it's like my skin is actually softer. I, that's Excellent. really weird. Yeah. You have two of them because you installed one and you just showed us a different one. So you must yeah. have two of them, right? I, I, actually, I, I have four of them <laughs> because, well, <okay. laughs> because I told right, them, uh, you know, Nancy says uh, she was so impressed with it. She goes, well, I, I know people that really would like to have this. So we got a few extra and we were going to uh, uh, basically sell them to uh, some of our friends and stuff because it's like, this is pretty incredible. No one, no one knows yeah. this kind of stuff exists. Well, maybe and, uh, we should offer it on the on the uh, website. Even uh, what uh, what? Yeah, we'll we'll discuss that in more detail later. Uh, and uh, yeah, let's let's uh, let's figure. Let's, let me yeah, we'll let talk me tell you, about that. Yeah, let me tell you some of these quantitative things that you can actually see in this. The pH gets uh, basically brought into uh, between seven and seven point five. I think that's right. Uh, that's so, good. so it it makes it a little more alkaline. Uh, which good. is actually good for the body. Yeah. Uh, it it makes the water wetter. The uh, the surface tension basically most wa most waters. Um, I can't remember the numbers. There's a there's a uh, hardness. Yeah. Uh, Nancy's sort of telling me some things, but the hardness basically drops way down, and and that's what causes it to be absorbed in things. Um, for instance, alcohol. When you put it on your skin, it absorbs real quickly into the cells. Well, this brings the surface tension of the water molecule way down, and it can absorb into things and makes it a much better solvent. Uh, an, it, uh, well, another it's better thing. for drinking, too, because a lot of times, uh, you know, the, the penta water is a small molecule of water, and the, mole the molecules of water tend to cluster larger, especially if the water is not real natural, and, and most of the water we have nowadays is not very natural. Mm -hmm. uh, and so uh, the, these larger clusters are harder to absorb by the cells, and the smaller the clusters go readily into cells. And so, yeah, that's that's probably yeah. what it is. It's it's awesome. It's awesome. Yeah. Well, he yeah. Uh, you know he told me that he did a lot, he studied uh, Victor Schauberger, and uh, you know this is this has been his. You know we were talking about someone's passion when you're following the leading of the spirit. This this is his, and uh, he had been working on this a long time, and. Uh, I have to say I'm I'm very impressed. I didn't know and there's no power to this thing. It basically just works off the the flow coming through the pipe and uh, uh it's just amazing. And he, oh he's had, he uh, Yeah, his his eyesight got better. His daughter doesn't wear glasses anymore. Um, That's great. Uh, Where are they it, from? What what state are they from? They're from South South Dakota, I think. Yeah. Okay. South Dakota. Yeah. Excellent, excellent. Uh, well, tell them if they get by this way, they can come by too. But yeah, we we'll definitely uh, talk more about that and and possibly offer it on our website. Uh, yeah, it's it sounds like good technology, and and that's I'm I'm 
I'm glad to see people following the leading of the Lord and doing their calling. If everybody does that, uh, this world could be a pretty good place. Uh, you know, it's, we can fix a lot of things. Uh, Absolutely. If learn to work you together know, for the better, I mean, it, for the good. Exactly. You know, it, it, it reminds me of things that are, that are set to come and unfold, just, just like the uh, quantum energy devices from wits that could you know take us off the the power meter out here it's that type of a thing that's going to make our lives a whole lot better and uh com completely change the way we do things here in the future so uh, yeah. I, mean, I i think it's just, very just very cool for the listeners uh in my spirit when you said that i felt a lot of listeners wondering uh uh, how that's going to come about, and basically, uh, 300 regular, uh, regular monthly donors, gifters, or tithers to the ministry will bring it about. Basically, we'll have enough coming in. We can do the factory. Uh, would be completed within a couple of years once that money comes in, and so that's how it can come about. Once the factory's up and running, then everybody can get one pretty cheap, uh, and that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to get these things to mankind as reasonably priced as we can. Right now, building them one at a time is not practical because there's way too much time involved. Uh, it's a little bit like building a computer by itself if you don't have the main components. Uh, the computer winds up being the size of a 10-story building and uh, and costs billions of dollars. And you know, if we didn't have the specialized little brain chips that we got nowadays, uh, that's that's where you would be with computers. And so that's that's the reason we need a factory is to, is to mass produce. Some three specialized little parts that'll do dominant energy mach machines, basically, and that'll make it a lot more reasonable for everybody, a lot more affordable for everybody. So yeah, I think I think some people have you know have had confusion. I think uh, you're explaining that really pretty well these days. Uh, but people had confusion about uh, uh, you know well, why can't we just start building these things? It's like well you don't understand the infrastructure doesn't exist for this stuff yet. And, yeah, uh, yeah. There needs to be an infrastructure in place in order. To, in other words, the key components have to be mass produced by somebody. Uh, otherwise, you, if you just try to do it with standard components, it ain't gonna work. And that's what a lot of people are doing. They're building these different machines, and I probably won't say anybody's names, but there's a whole bunch of people selling plans and kits, and most people buy those, and most people build them. Most people never get over Unity. Uh, right. The only things I know of that work over Unity is the stuff we offer on our page. And the, and those are small scale systems. So if people want to run houses or whatever, we need to get this into mass production to get these these amounts of power, basically. Right, and you and you brought up those scams. I just came across another one this week um, that's that's out there all over the place on the internet, um, and they're they're putting up sort of uh, mirrored sites, so you, you can't exactly. I mean, it's like they're copying sites that kind of look the same, but they have different, you know, web addresses. But there, it's a kind of a multi-level affiliate thing. Uh, the one I came across is called Tesla's Secrets, and they're going to sell you Tesla's Secrets um, so that you can you can eventually take your house right off the grid and just not pay any more electric bills. I'm going. Yeah, I don't. That's I don't think so. Uh, yeah, that's a shame. There's all these scams, just one right after another. Just to, you know, and, and the ministry, of course, uh, Tesla was involved with the ministry. He's one of the spokesmen. And of course, if anybody has has the secrets, we do, and they're really not secrets. We tell people openly what's involved and what's going on, uh, and that's why we offer consultation and everything else. But uh, yeah, there's all these different scam organizations that keep coming out that. Uh, their whole, I guess, their whole goal is to rip people off so bad that everybody, that, they, that most of them, everybody decides that all of it's scams. You know, they can't find the real thing in there. You know, <laughs> right? Uh, it's right. a shame. It's a shame. Uh, we had Magna Work and uh, a few yeah. others. I think yeah. are out of, out of business now, but uh, they were like they ripped off at least at least hundreds of millions, maybe billions out of people. And, yeah, uh, yeah. So people people need to uh, anything that's it's promising these type of things that you're going to build it in a week or less, or and you're going to build it for a few hundred dollars or less. They're they're always scams. There's no uh, nothing like that been developed yet. Or well, yeah. Well, all I got to say is I haven't seen those parts at Radio Shack that you could really do that with. <laughs> right, right, right. It takes special. Uh, it takes quantum energy parts is what it takes. So, and a little bit like the Queet. The Queet that we offer is balanced uh, in quantum energy. And basically, uh, eventually it will be all one part, but initially I think three parts, one for polar, one for dipolar, one for parapolar, is a good way to do a circuit that will be stable and produce power. 
the bowler brings in the power and the other two stabilize it, basically like a three-legged chair, uh, right. a three-legged table, maybe. It'd be a better way to say it. Yeah, and and yeah. for for new listeners, that's uh, that's kind of Keeley talk uh, from uh, John Worrell Keeley and uh, uh, the Triune Polar Field. Yeah, so yeah. You're, you, you're, you're, Keeley was involved with the ministry, and he he named most of the stuff, and we still use the terminology because it fits pretty well. The you know they've come out with new terminology, but a lot of it is based on flawed theories. Uh, you know, yeah, I could go into it, but right, not necessarily right. Too. And I, I think I think uh, it's probably um, more contemporary to, to use quantum uh, particles and things like that. Uh, is yeah, probably. There's three, yeah, right now they admit there's quantum dots. We finally got this in the mainstream in the ni late 90s, 97 or so. We finally got other scientific organizations to admit there are quantum particles, and they call them quantum dots. They still haven't officially admitted there's three different primary types. Uh, they do admit there's a variety of types, and, and there are a variety of types. So it is getting into mainstream. People can research this on your computer, uh, and you can find information on it. Right. So yeah, I'm gonna. I'll, I'll just try to interject. Anytime you say something that uh, a, uh, a, I guess a layman uh, interested might say, a what? A, a quant? A polar? What? So. Because uh, <laughs> I because I know I know it's a second language to you, and uh, but to most other people, it's like he's just talking gibberish. What is all that? So, yeah, yeah, I'm an energy engineer, so I have to be familiar with a wide variety of energies. <laughs> and most electrical engineers are only familiar with electrons, and that's about it. Uh, if it gets outside of electrons, it's too foreign to them. And, uh, well, that's, <laughs> yeah. that's reality. Reali reality doesn't just deal with electrons. Reality deals with uh, all kinds of things. Uh, for example, uh, lightning is not, a, is not just electrons. It's actually, there's less electrons than there is anything else in there. If you count everything else put together, it's a lot more of that. Subatomic particles or even atomic sized particles, uh, ions and so on. These these are quite uh, quite dramatic once you learn how to use them. Quite useful. Well, yeah, I, 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 yeah, I gotta say, you uh, want to take some questions? Yeah, yeah, okay. Let's, let's go, Brother Randy. It says, do you have a good remedy for when I fall into a bad attitude? And loving and connecting with God is just not on the radar screen. <clears throat> well, that's a good question, Brother Andy. Uh, I would say, um, I would say, you know, finding your calling and working on that would be a good remedy. What do you think, Brother uh, Martin? Yeah, I, I think that's a a, a great answer um, because because once you're once you're doing that and you're doing it more and more throughout your day, eh, you don't have you don't have bad days when you're not. Uh, when you're in the, yeah. I always call it the flow. You might say, I mean things, yep, yeah, things just happen yeah. for you, and it's great. Yeah. Amen. And as long as we're in the life, we'll have some challenges because that's, uh, you know, that's the nature of this old old world. But yeah, uh, we, we well, we have to learn things, don't we? Yeah, yeah, we have, and you know, but sometimes every day don't go right. But uh, generally speaking, the more you're in the flow, the better the day goes. So uh, that's that's the goal. I found this last. Uh, the last mission I wanted five years ago, the Lord told me to go to this one area that's very high in kidnapping and uh, terrorists and stuff and minister there, and I didn't go. And I wasn't sure it was the Lord telling me, but I was pretty sure. But I didn't want to go because I was afraid of being kidnapped and you know tortured and killed and all this, you know, ransomed and all this. Well, I finally surrendered to the Lord on this last trip, and I went to that area and ministered, and and things changed dramatically for five years. Things just weren't quite right in the ministry. A lot of things just kept getting blocked, and and uh, and things changed a lot, and things started going smoother than they had ever before. So, uh, in, in a lot of ways, uh, you know, everything wasn't still. It wasn't perfect. You know, as long as you live in this old world, nothing, everything's not going to be perfect. But things improved dramatically, and so I could see that uh, my being out of the flow uh, <laughs> caused some problems for five years. <laughs> Fixed when I finally did what I was supposed to do, you know, and it was it was amazing. I mean, lots of people were helped and healed in those both those areas, and, and both those areas said people no no missionary had ever come here before, you know, <laughs> and, and you know, of course I said, well, I understand why, you know, <laughs> they probably got kidnapped for the by the time they got off the plane, you know. <laughs> 
Uh, but God is good. He watched out for me and uh, he took care of me. Let's go on to the next question. Brother Jim in Chicago it says, where is that scripture that says that the, that the devil brings up your past and steals your serenity? Um, the accuser of our brother has been hurled down who accuses him before our Lord both day and night. So if you type that into Google search and quotes, uh, you'll find it. But I think it's in Revelation, and that's just one of them. There's many others. But the accuser of our brother, and that means that's you and me. We're the brothers in the Lord. And that's the devil. Yeah, he'll try to he'll try to bring up your past mistakes that you made that, that are under the blood. You repented over them. You've you've done what you know to do to make them right, and you just leave that behind. But the devil will bring them up, and he'll try to ruin your peace or ruin your serenity. And that's one of the scriptures. Uh, the accuser of our brother has been hurled. Brothers have been hurled down who accuses them day and night before the Lord. Uh, so just type that in in quotes. And in uh, in your Google search, and you'll find it. And and I can I can give you that next week also, brother uh, Jim, if you if you don't have it by then. And we have another question, uh, brother Jim, I believe the same brother. Uh, is, can you point out the scriptures that say that edify each other in the body of Christ? Edify each other in the body of Christ. Uh, yeah, quite a few. Uh, again, um, let's see. You got you got any thoughts on that, brother? <laughs> hey, you're, you're you're the scripture guy. I'm I'm okay. uh, I'm a I'm a newbie in that. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Let's see what we got here. Yeah, I'll have to look some of those up for next time because I don't know them right off the top of my head. But again, anything can be searched. Uh, even just edify in the body of Christ. You can type that in on your search engine. And you'll find a whole bunch of articles. Nowadays, there's so much in on on the computer that you can find pretty quickly, and so it's a great tool if you know how to use it. Uh, yeah. So let's let's go on to the next question. And um, it says, "Are you brothers, brother Litke?" It says, "Are you familiar with the words of Victor Shaw, works of Victor Schauberge, and how he said water can purify itself if it's kept moving and moving." And the moving should be in a certain direction for it to work. You want to answer that one, brother? Uh, well, Martin? yeah, uh, you you pronounce it different. I, I pronounce it Schauberger, but I used uh, to pronounce it until I went to Europe and where he's from, and they all corrected me. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, well, some some of the, yeah some of the things that I uh, I did read is uh, you know water wants to be. Uh, a certain way and we typically don't treat it that way we put it in pipes and run it down straight walled concrete uh, ditches and so forth and that's not uh, that's not a natural uh, way that water wants to be you know streams are typically uh, very curvy and bumpy and swirling and uh, uh, that I think that makes life in the water. I know Victor talked about living water as opposed to dead water, and uh, yep. living living water had certain qualities about it. And uh, pretty much what we use in modern world here is pretty dead water. It's sitting in reservoirs out in the sun and with pollutants and toxins. And um, so I definitely know there's a, and I can speak right now from experience that there's a definitely a difference between the same water that's treated in a different way. So, um, uh, and I can measure it with a pH meter. So it, it, it's really quite fascinating on that. So I don't know. You might want to add to that. No, I think that's great. That's, you covered it well. Yeah, that's that's fantastic. Live water is definitely uh, uh, wonderful, and well, it's uh, it, right, is, well, it is produced by the right kind of spinning actions, emotions, and and the right kind of. Uh, <laughs> what happens is water is extremely absorbent for dominant energy. It's it's like a sponge, and dominant energy is healthy if it's if it's not polluted. And and the polar of the dominant energy is self cleaning, uh, which is the most uh, abundant in nature probably is the polar. Uh, it's self cleaning. So yeah, you can get that in your water. You can and, and there's a number of ways to do that. There's been different pyramid shapes which collect dominant energy. Uh, with pipes running through them, spiraling up to the point, and so on. And Chabergé also showed some funnel systems, you know, with the horn, the right shape of the, of the horn, and so on. All these things are very useful. And probably the brother that made that device incorporated some of that into that device. Uh, am I right? Yeah, I think that, so. Yeah. I think so. And uh, uh, one of the things that I, that stuck in my head uh, reading uh, about Victor is 
uh, he studied nature in the forest, apparently, and uh, one of the things he's known for very early on was he was able to get water to flow through flumes and and float logs uphill. So he could actually, you know, because they would fall timbers and they needed some way to move them, and he could actually build flumes that actually went uphill and hauled the, hauled the logs up that way. That's awesome. And, you know, I've read that, uh, so that's like an anti-gravity thing that happens when you get everything right. And I've also read and talked to people that study dolphins, and they say dolphins are more intelligent than people, most of the people that study them. An average dolphin speaks five dolphin languages, and an average person only speaks one or two right. human languages. Uh, and uh, also, dolphins are capable of making bubbles that go down to sink, and they sink uh, 20, 30 feet before they lose this property. Uh, they blow big bubbles, and they'll go down 20, 30 feet down. And, uh, you know, air bubbles shouldn't go down. Air bubbles right. should go up. Well, that's, that, that's <laughs> showing you something right there. What's What's up with that? <laughs> Yeah, they, they've they got uh, some pretty advanced uh, techniques and knowledge of their own. And, uh, you know, they're, they're like I say, most people that study them say they're more intelligent than humans. So uh, that that tells you something right there, that we've got at least two intelligent races on this planet, and humans <laughs> are just one of them. And humans are the lesser of the two. <laughs> uh, uh, we got to... We have a lot of questions, so I guess we'll go on. We may not get to cover everybody's questions tonight, but thank you for your question. We'll save them for the show for next week. Um, Brother Lidke is making a comment, I believe. It says, Randy's question is the same as asked you earlier this week, I think. You said, among other things, that the devil or the dark side is lying to you, uh, to lying to me, and I'm believing it. Sometimes you don't feel saved, but you still are. Yes, yeah, so that's a good point, Brother Lickie. Thank you for making that. Sometimes you don't feel like you're in, in, the, in service to the Lord, but you still are, because the, we're not led by what you feel like. We're led by the Spirit of God. And uh, the Spirit of God doesn't, you know, your emotions are different than what God's speaking in your heart. And, and that's where people get, people often get affected from the outside in. You know, somebody else will be negative or yelling or whatever, and that'll affect them from the outside in. That's not God. God comes from the inside out. He comes from joy, that joy and that love and that peace that comes from bubbling way down inside and it comes its way out, works its way out. And so that sometimes you got to get spirit centered instead of being world centered or surrounding centered. Uh, and that'll help you a lot. He says, um, he recommends, Brother Licky recommends uh, stopping, if he's down or depressed, I guess is what he's saying, he stops eating for a while until he feels better, and then uh, he starts eating like raw carrots, raw apples, and, and drink healthy water, et cetera, et cetera. So that's that's all good. Thank you, Brother Licky, for that uh, input. And I'm, I'm uh, believing that'll bless uh, Brother Andy and anybody else that has issues like that. Uh, so thank you. Uh, let's go on to the next. I've got an email that this brother uh, I should answer, and it's Brother MJ, who's a wonderful brother over in Europe. And let me pull up his his question. Oh, yeah, he asked. Uh, we talked about wormholes the other week, and he's, uh, we talked about how there's two counter rotating discs, one in front of the other, rotating opposite directions. And he asked what's between the two discs is what his question was. And so the answer to that is air is between the two discs. Uh, so that's that's I just wanted to answer that. And if you have more questions, feel free to ask more. Uh, you know, I'll I'll be happy to answer. Let, let me uh, let me inter interject in there a little bit. Um, uh, Greg found a picture that was taken um, that appears to be a legitimate picture that was taken on board that ship that they were trying out the uh, uh, Philadelphia experiment and there's a picture of this uh, strange uh, disc shaped uh, it sounds exactly like what you were describing of uh, a wormhole out in front of the ship and these you know these uh, Navy men are, are standing around it's an old black and white thing and you could it's like it looked like a picture that was taped up on somebody's bulletin board but it looks remarkably real because uh, there's this circular, um, it's almost like a circular uh, ring, and it's got, a, uh, you might say, f flames or, f or kind of a aura, or, you know, shooting out from the, from the surrounding area. And it, it looks really weird, um, and I can't imagine like it would be like that. It, it may be something clipped. They did videotape the whole Philadelphia experiment. Uh, on, on, I say the whole experiment, the, 
from the shore. They, they videotape everything, all the point where it went inv totally invisible, disappeared, and even they had kept the thing running. And then they didn't they didn't know what happened because you know after 20 or so minutes it wasn't they had turned it off because they thought well the ship disappeared somewhere you know or something happened it all evaporated or something. Well then it reappeared and so you didn't get to see it reappear. You got to see him turn the camera back on. <laughs> <laughs> well, th well th this is this is definitely a still shot, and there there's an accompanying shot that looks like it's from an airplane. Um, it's like a series of two or three, and there are, I think, like three ships sort of paralleling, sort of uh, just um, driving out to the in the ocean, and the one in the center, on the last shot, you see the wake, but you don't see any ship there anymore. And, yeah, uh, that that I think that was a subsequent experiment. Not not in other words, it happened later. I I, I know that video. I know that picture that you're talking about. And uh, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure that's a subsequent experiment. Uh, eventually, they perfected invis optical visibility and radar invisibility, and uh, they're using it now on ships and tanks both. And of course, on tanks and ships, you're going to still see the wake on a ship and still going to see the tracks on the tank. But you're not going to see the, you know, it's it's pretty good camouflage. You know what I mean? It's, <laughs> you don't see anything else, you know. Uh, you know, so it's yeah, it's awesome technology, and uh, yeah, they have kept working on it ever since World War II. And of course, they've they, these people have billions and trillions to pour into this stuff. So it's uh, yeah. So then yeah. Anyway, let's let's go on to the next question. Yeah, it's awesome. I would like to see those pictures when when he gets time. I'll, I'll try to get Greg to uh, get them to you. Yeah, and oh, next week I'd like to put up some pictures on the show, so we'll talk after the show, but remind okay. me on that. Uh, let's see. Um, next question, Brother Licky. This is a comment, I guess, or a question. Have you heard of air purifying study that said basically that a fan does a better overall job of cleaning the air than most ionizers just because the air is moving? And I wouldn't be surprised if that's correct. Moving air is definitely healthier than stagnant or stale air. And matter of fact, uh, there's been a number of buildings that I've lived in where I keep a small fan, just a small one, you know, one of those that don't even consume a watt, running all the time in almost every room just because of that. It, it definitely keeps improves the air quality quite a bit. So thank you, Brother Lidke, for that, prom that, uh, that thought, and I think it will help a lot of people that are listening. Next question, have you done any studies that prove or disprove Victor's work with respect to water purification? Uh, yeah, we've done a number of experiments that prove Victor is definitely on the right track, and he's definitely a man of God, and he definitely had some wisdom, and so on. Yeah, so that's the answer to that. Uh, this is Brother John, John Soule from uh, San Clemente, California, and thank you for the... Uh, uh, question. It says, uh, the gift that helps to get better gas mileage, is it a hydrogen on demand or some other kind of technology? Without revealing too much, can you explain generally what it does and how it works? Yeah, it's, uh, some people call it a um, um, fuel ionizer. It basically uh, goes around the fuel line and as the fuel passes through it, it, it energizes the fuel not regular ions, but more like dominant energy, and so therefore it breaks down easier when it gets into the combustion chamber, and uh, and therefore you you get more power, or if you drive easier, you get more mileage, you get better mileage, and that's that's the way that works. Yeah, and I, like, go ahead. I, I did I did uh, when I was up there visiting one time. Uh, I think you showed me one of those. They're, they're that little curly Q looking little thing, and uh, you kind of related it. Similar to a quantum, uh, uh, one of the little quick quantum strips, uh, they work similarly yeah. principle as that on the fuel yeah, line. Yeah, yeah, basically the quantum, uh, the quick, the quantum enhancement technology, they are, they're both the same technology. Uh, anything you put that in contact with, it's, it tends to increase the energy level in that thing. And we're, uh, you know, we've, we've proven over and over again for healing and, and so on. You put it on pain and the energy starts flowing and there's, you can even register heat and so on. More energy than what was there before. And that's, uh, that's easy to prove and, and shows up on different kinds of meters, including thermal meters and so on. Uh, and it also, also shows up on different kinds of uh, electrical meters that, that there is an energy coming off of this. And when you put it on anything else that has it, an energy, it enhances that energy or increases that energy, if you want to say it that way. 
So yeah, it's it's interesting technology. Uh, let's see, Brother John also has another question. It says, "I getting interested now in this whole house water unit. Can you get us a deal?" Okay, well, like I say, we'll we'll get more on that next time. We'll be back with you more on that next time. And uh, well, like I say, we'll try to put them on the website and make them available. We'll see how how it all works out. Yeah, I, uh, I, I really wasn't trying to make a commercial for them, but uh, it is well, really, he's a brother it's really the remarkable. Yeah, this is all about working together, and you know, if 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 we can make it, if we can not, make, we're not going to make it. But if it, you know, how, if we can work it out and make it better for the whole planet, everybody benefits. You know what I mean? We're just uh, encouraging. If you already had good results, then everybody else will probably have good results. You know, so it sounds it sounds like a good machine. Um, so we'll we'll get more information on that for next time, brother John. Next question, brother Randy. It says we would like to eliminate fluoride from our water. Any suggestions? Well, does that device take the fluoride out? Okay, fluoride. Fluoride's a, apparently a, a real hard one to uh, to filter out or to take out of uh, out of the water supply. Now, the the way this will help, though, is that the water molecule um, it has to do when you have the water structured properly. It'll basically uh, when it when it goes into a li living organism, it'll basically uh, work toward supporting life for that living organism. So anything that's toxic or not supporting of life, it tries to surround and basically pass through the body. So it's going to enable your your normal immune system and, and your, uh, uh, you know, your, your natural filters and everything to work properly. So you can actually pass it right through and the water will basically take it right through and, and flush those toxins. Another thing, you know, and that that's, happens too because when you first start drinking this water, um, you'll notice that uh, your urine will st smell a little bit stronger because it's it's basically flushing toxins through you. It's almost like a cleanse, but the, but yeah. it's just water. I mean, there's nothing. It's not adding anything into the water other than changing the the properties of it. So it's it's fast. So yes, it it doesn't actually take it take it out, but it'll help your body process it correctly and get it out of there. Yeah. Amen. 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 Well, that covers most of the questions. Uh, and uh, everybody, thank you for your questions. And we're an hour and 15 minutes uh, on the show. And so uh, we can we can call it a, a show here unless you have anything else to add or any announcements or anything we should encourage or remind everybody. Um, no, I, I can't can't think of anything other than uh, keep uh, spreading the word out there and, and tell uh, friends or send emails or whatever and try to get people involved in this uh in this effort, uh, you and know, the solutions. Yeah, let's work together and make these solutions happen. 300 people isn't a lot to ask for, especially since we have over 3,000 on our mailing list, maybe 6,000 on our mailing list, and oh. there's other people with mailing lists that say they have two and a half million. So, should be an easy deal. I got, I got one more thing we could ask uh, anyone uh, listening, and if you're listening to this in the archives or something uh, later on after the, after the show, um, put your angels on working this problem because uh, you know if everybody works and 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 puts a group of angels on this problem, it'll get solved. And uh, we'll and, be making quantum energy machines before you know it. Yeah, and then when the Lord tells you, you know, the angels will go and tell people different things to do. When the Lord tells you, to, the listener, to do something, you do it. You know, whatever it is the Lord's telling you. That's why I tell everybody to pray about it and see if God would have you become a regular donor, even even $15 a month, $20 a month, $50 a month, whatever the Lord's leading, you know, uh, people working together can make this happen for all humanity, and it's not a huge number of people, uh, you know, so it's, it's it should be doable. The, uh, the other thing I want to remind all the listeners about is next week is going to be a fantastic show, uh, ancient archaeology, there's some major discoveries, like I say, a free energy machine is still running. It's two, at least 2,000 years old. Maybe maybe some of scientists are saying uh, 30,000 years old. And so we're going to go into detail on that. And if we got uh, if we got Greg's help, we'll be putting up pictures and video and so on while we're talking. And it'll make it interesting for everybody. Uh, it's, it'll be a show you don't want to miss. That sounds great. All right. Well, thank you everybody for joining us, and God bless you. And uh, like I say, send in uh, send in your questions and comments, and if you need prayer, send that in. Uh, we're happy to pray for you. Uh, Wits twenty fourteen. That's W I T S two zero one four at yahoo dot com. And God bless you. All right. Good night, everybody. Okay. Over and out. <laughs>